Freud's proposition of psychosexual development claims that as we grow up, we pass through five critical phases. Our coitus drive, which Freud called the libido, focuses in a different amorous zone at each phase. The phases are called oral, anal, phallic, quiescence, and genital. If our experience during any of these phases was traumatic, we might develop prepossessions latterly in life, similar as neurosis, dependences, dependences, or depression. Before we begin, I would appreciate if you would like the videotape so that you can help me to continue spreading the Stoic Gospel. If you aren't subscribed, I recommend you to subscribe and spark the bell so you don't miss any videotape. The Oral Phase The Oral Phase Age 0 to 1 In the first time of our lives, we discover the world through our oral senses. Our main pleasure comes from stinking our mama's bone or a bottle. The conflict that occurs now is the weaning from our primary caregiver. Hans is weaned off his mama's bone without trauma. Ernst's mama stops feeding him within four months of birth, which is too early. Ida is frequently left alone crying when she's empty. Hans becomes a healthy and independent adult. Ernst suffers from trauma and develops an oral obsession. He tries to compensate for it by biting goo all the time. Ida spends her entire life looking for the oral stimulation she was denied as a child, and thus develops a manipulative and addicting personality. The anal phase, the A equals sign anal phase, age 1 to 3. The primary focus of our libido at this age is the control of the bladder and bowel movements. We've to learn how to use the restroom. Hans' parents praise his attempts to use the restroom and encourage him to learn at his own pace. Ernst's parents force restroom training on him too beforehand and discipline him for miscalculations. Ida's parents neglect any sweats at restroom training entirely. Hans develops a competent personality and a good and balanced relationship with authority. Ernst develops an anal forgetful personality. He becomes an over-controlling and stingy grown-up with nausea for his own body and a tendency to observe authority. Ida develops an anal expulsive personality. She becomes messy, disorganized, impertinent of other people's passions and rebellious against authority. The phallic phase, the phallic phase, age three to six. Our libido now turns to the genitals as we discover the differences between the womanish and the manly gender. The boy's conflict in this phase occurs as a contest with their father, also called the Oedipus complex. Ernst and Hans desire to retain their mama and visualize about getting relief of their father, but they know that their father is stronger and sweat being penalized for their desire. Freud called this castration anxiety. Ida jests, penis envy. She believes that a penis is the key to power and domination and also wants one. Hans' father was veritably present during that phase. Latterly, Hans resolves this conflict by relating explosively with him. He learns to take on a manly part. As in grown-up, he respects both genders. Ernst, whose father was absent during that phase, fails to develop a strong sense of masculinity. He has a mama obsession and isn't sure about his fornication. He also tends to be aggressive towards women and constantly needs to contend with other men. Ida, like all women, maintains her penis covetousness for the rest of her life, which in her case causes an inferiority complex towards men. The latent phase idle phase, age 7 to 13. In this phase, our libido is suppressed as our sexual energy is being sublimed into developing life chops. Our superego strengthens and we explosively identify with social values, same coitus icons and musketeers. Hans follows numerous pursuits, Ernst loves learning at Academy, and Ida makes lots of new lady loves. There's no real conflict in this phase. All three of them profit for the rest of their lives from the chops they develop during quiescence. The genital phase, the genital phase, puberty to death. Once we reach puberty, our libido starts to come active again, and we develop an interest in sexual mates. Hans, Ida, and Ernst face the challenge of balancing the sexual solicitations of the ID and the requirements of the superego to observe social morals. The development of a strong pride helps to find a concession between the two. Hans, who has endured a non-age without important trauma, succeeds in erecting a strong pride. He's chastened at work, 
has a loving relationship and a fulfilled coitus life. Ernst's pride is weaker than his superego. He obeys morals and authorities, and as a result suppresses his solicitations which leads to the development of misutilizations. Ida has a weak pride and a weak superego. Her sexual requirements are more important than social morals or other people's passions. She's egoistic and feels no guilt for breaking the law or hurting others. Freud's Theory to understand the proposition, we need to see it in the environment of Freud's notorious work on the unconscious, by admitting that we've a subconscious. He also inferred that we store recollections of early non-age and other jests without indeed realizing it. These once jests also unconsciously impact our jest on a diurnal base. Freud claimed that our mind operates in three spheres, which we can imagine as a submarine. The unconscious. Position operates the ID. The preconscious position operates the superego. The conscious and preconscious situations operate our pride. Youthful children are driven by the id and demand immediate satisfaction. At around age seven, we begin to develop a superego and want to become good moral citizens and please others. The pride is formed with non age to balance the two forces. Conclusion. Sigmund Schlomo Freud was an Austrian neurologist and the author of Psychoanalysis. Freud theorized that the unconscious would flash back and store all our jests latterly. They pop up from time to time through dreams and associative studies. By revealing traumatic recollections and solicitations through discussion, we can free ourselves from our neuroses and live a more healthy and fulfilled life. He recommended we shouldn't strive to exclude our complexes, but to get into accord with them. They are legitimately what directs our conduct in the world. What do you suppose about this proposition and the practice of psychoanalysis? Is there some verity in it? Do we even unconscious? If so, does it really store all our non-age jests and impact our jest as grown-ups? Please partake your studies in the commentary below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.